Today, Nicholas founder and chairman may be out, but he's walking away with billions. Plus, WeChat downloads surge in the US after Friday's ban was announced, as one media mogul tells us here at CNBC that the TikTok deal is a quote, crock. And finally, President Trump says he'll announce his Supreme Court pick on Saturday. We'll dive into the big money behind the coming confirmation fight. I'm Mackenzie Segalos, and this is CNBC After Hours. All it takes is one day to break a losing streak, and that's exactly what happened on Wall Street. After yesterday's brutal sell-off, all three major averages finished higher. The Dow breaking a three-day losing streak, the S&P and Nasdaq posting a win after four straight days of losses. One of the many stocks in the green today? Nikola. The electric vehicle company closed up more than 3% just one day after the founder and executive chairman stepped down following a brutal report from a short-selling firm accusing Nikola and Milton of, quote, an ocean of lies. Now, remember, short sellers bet against companies, meaning that they make money if that company's stock falls. There's a lot going on in this Nikola story huge stock gains over the summer, a partnership with auto industry heavyweight General Motors, fraud allegations, and examinations from regulators like the SEC. And all this went down without the company ever producing a car or basically making any money. CNBC's Phil LeBeau can sort through the whole saga and explain where Nikola and its shareholders go from here. The agreement between Nikola and Trevor Milton for him to step down as executive chairman of that company calls for him to forfeit about $160 million worth of Nikola shares. Uh, he will have a package of $3.1 billion worth of Nikola stock that he will walk away from the company with. And some people will look at that and they'll say, wow, $3.1 billion and he's being run out of the company. The flip side is he was the founder of Nikola and he got them through this SPAC IPO. Now, granted, there are a lot of questions about that SPAC IPO and about the claims that were made uh, by Trevor Milton when he was chairman of the company. Nonetheless, this is a company that six months ago, it wasn't worth anything compared to what it's worth now. In just a couple of weeks, Nikola has gone from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. Think about it this way. When Nikola signed an agreement with General Motors, it validated Nikola. It was a stamp on Nikola that said, you know what? GM thinks that these guys are one of the players to watch in the future. GM wants a piece of Nikola. And then just a couple of days later, Hindenburg Research, which is shorting shares of Nikola, came out with a very damning report, a report that essentially called Nikola a house of lies, essentially calling them a fraud. And when people read that research, and then when Nikola said, look, one of the claims there about what we have promised in the past was, in fact, accurate on Hindenburg's part. You've got the SEC as well as the DOJ reportedly looking into the allegations that were raised by Hindenburg Research. How does that play out? Does it ultimately lead to some type of deeper investigation? Nobody knows what quite to expect there. At the same time, Nikola with a new chairman. Steve Gursky is gonna take a much more measured approach to Nikola's future. And he'll be working with the CEO of Nikola. And I suspect you will not hear as much from them. And the challenge now for them is to say to General Motors, this is still a good deal. You still want an 11% stake in us. We will pay off. And for GM, it says that it's sticking with Nikola. At the end of the day, GM is not paying any money to Nikola. It's not out billions of dollars, and it still has the potential to benefit by supplying battery technology as well as hydrogen fuel cell technology and getting more size and scale. And that was really the most attractive part of this potential relationship for GM. Okay, let's get to our sound check. Here's a roundup of the day's biggest action and what the top newsmakers and business leaders had to say. The potential for lockdowns creates a lot of volatility in the market right now. And so, um, you know, with taking all that in consideration right now, we do think that, um, you know, the IT sector is poised for some more drawback. Is 
this is deeply concerning. I mean, seeing these kinds of activities where guidance gets drafted somewhere else and posted on the CDC website, and that, that, those kinds of things are very concerning because you need to, uh, you need to be able to accept that the um, material being put out by an organization, by an agency, represents the view of that agency. The whole thing is a crock. I mean, it starts, obviously, simply to say we want to protect the security of, uh, uh, of Americans from uh, anything that could happen to them by using TikTok. It is now morphed into this kind of ludicrous uh, kind of match, game match between tossing ownership here, control there, et cetera, et cetera. Let me say that I think a big part of the of the good economic news that we have had results from the fiscal support that came with the CARES Act. So it, it deserves a lot of the credit for keeping people spending and uh, keeping people uh, business confidence and household confidence high. I think that it is likely that, that more fiscal support will be needed. I believe a targeted package is still needed and the administration is ready to reach a bipartisan agreement. I don't think that V-shaped recovery depends on the package, but I do think a targeted package could be a great help. The death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has sent shockwaves through Washington. Lots of DC types, pundits, policy watchers, and strategists say that the chances of another COVID relief bill making its way through a Congress that's fighting tooth and nail over a vacant Supreme Court seat are slim to none. Trump said he'll announce his nominee on Saturday, and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has committed to giving her a vote. Democrats are promising to do everything they can to stop it, claiming we're too close to a presidential election to confirm a lifetime Supreme Court justice, especially after McConnell refused for months in 2016 to give Barack Obama's nominee a vote. The battle is sure to be expensive. Dollars are pouring in as PACs and outside interests line up to support their side of the aisle. Brian Schwartz reports on money and politics for CNBC.com. He can break down all the big spending ahead of the confirmation showdown. The upcoming Supreme Court fight over the now vacant Ruth Bader Ginsburg seat um, really is going to be one of the more expensive uh, campaigns that we've seen over the last few years. President Trump was already nominated and pushed through two other Supreme Court justices, uh, Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. Both in those cases, outside groups came in, these kind of 501c4 political organizations to push through or to try to stop uh, those two nominees in, in, in different ways. In this case, you know, this is gonna be a lot bigger. And all these types of organizations are either standing for or against moving out of the nomination. Those are the things we're gonna see. A lot of TV ads, a lot of digital ads. Uh, the people we spoke to who have knowledge of this Planned Parenthood effort say it's gonna be very digital ad focused, using you know Republican senators' words against them in the past where they said they wouldn't take up a nominee like this so close to the election. And it's really gonna be message-based ad focus and pummeling the airwaves with different viewpoints about should this nominee go forward. What's happened here is that since Friday, since the announcement that uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, the online uh, platform known as Act Blue that helps Democrats raise money up and down the ballot, not just for presidential, for Senate races, for House races and the like, have raised over $100 million since then. And this is largely according to what they're saying from small dollar donors. And when you look at what's happened, even in the buildup to this, outside of the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Democrats were already on a roll raising money. It's interesting that the money already was going toward Democrats and, and at, at a rapid clip, but now you go into this whole situation where they're clearly gonna be seeing a boost uh, with about 45 or so days left until election day. Okay, time for today's numbers round. First up, 
100. A company spokesman said today the Carnival Cruise Line is laying off more than 100 ship officers as the size of the overall fleet of ships is reduced. Now, Carnival is the largest cruise operator in the world, and its parent company, Carnival Corporation, is cutting 18 ships from its fleet after cruises have been halted in the U.S. for the past six months. The spokesman told the Dow Jones that these job cuts make up a small percentage of the company's overall workforce. Cruise lines have taken a beating this year after being hotbeds for infection at the beginning of the pandemic. Carnival Corp stock is down around 70% in 2020 so far. Next, $1.75 billion. Mobile short form streaming service Quibi, which has raised $1.75 billion in total, is reportedly exploring strategic options, including a possible sale, according to the Wall Street Journal. Quibi was supposed to bring quality content to busy people on the go, but it launched in the middle of a pandemic while everyone was sitting still. Since then, the streamer has struggled to meet subscriber targets after many users who downloaded the free trial did not sign up for the paid service once the trial period ended. In addition to a sale, the journal reports that Quibi is also exploring the possibility of going public via SPAC, a current IPO trend right now when shell companies acquire a private company and take it public. And finally, 28. U.S. downloads of WeChat, China's ubiquitous messaging app, were 28 times higher this weekend than the prior weekend, according to analytics firm Sensor Tower. The two-day surge began Friday, after the Trump administration announced that future downloads of the Chinese-owned app would be banned beginning Sunday, as tensions escalate between Washington and Beijing over tech and national security including the confusing ownership structure of the current TikTok Oracle deal on the table. On Sunday, however, a federal judge temporarily blocked Trump's move to ban WeChat downloads. As with the TikTok deal, we'll have to wait and see how this one plays out. That's it for After Hours, but before we go, here's one more thing to keep an eye on. Tesla's much-hyped battery day is here. Elon Musk and co. are set to announce details about a new type of battery cell it developed. Now, Musk himself tried to lower expectations by tweeting that everything being revealed today is more long-term in nature, and we're not likely to see substantial production until 2022. Tesla shares even took a hit on this, finishing the day in the red. Now, we're taping this before the presentation starts, but we'll have full team coverage on CNBC.com and on the CNBC app. Wall Street has been talking about this presentation for weeks, so be sure to check it out. We'll be right here in our home office every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday with new editions of After Hours, so be sure to catch us then.